This is Stephanie at High Tower Stitching. Today I'm back with part two of hand stitching a charming five inch churn dash quilt block. Now, four things I want to quickly go through. One is completing the unit block. Two is attaching one block to another. Three, adding the first inner border and then adding the next round. Hope you enjoy this. Here are the three parts, three rows, to put one unit together. And you can see it hasn't been pressed yet, except when I was sewing it, I did open up the seams on the back of that one, open up that one and that one. Then I went and pressed them. I figured that out. Then come back and start to put them together. The easiest way to put this together is to start with the center and take that center block and hook it to the center block on the other one, which would be the on the reverse side of this, and pin it. And then you can just lay these out and, and look at them and go. And sometimes one end will be longer. Don't worry about that. The main thing is to get this in, right here in the center just right. If you look at this one, you'll see that here was my center plate piece. Here's where I matched up the blocks on each one and it really made that come together well and the others are going to be okay. The next part we're going to be looking at is this outside edge. Now even though this does not look perfect this is going to work because if you look where my points are I'm going to make my seam come down through those points and I'll show you how. I want you to notice a very little triangle right here and there's another one over here usually that one wasn't as pretty let's look down here um, here's one on the right hand side and oh, this is a great one and here's another one and why I want to find that is because I want to make my seam come down and cross that little point and go over to the next little point and then keep going. And now I'm putting two blocks together. Here's an example block of where I watched those points on the other side and I stitched. And look, every time does that do that? Not necessarily, but you're going to have so many opportunities for those points to meet, to meet by the time you get done. You're going to be getting better and better at that. So let's backtrack for just a minute. When I started to uh, do this, I said, well, I know that I'm going to have to have 12. I'm going to have to have center block and then outside for the first row, I'm going to have to have 13. So I picked some colors that I wanted to choose. I didn't go ahead and make nine of each of those. I just sort of made one of each one. It's tedious, but when I got it done, you're going to see that I've got a nice row going that made me want to keep going. And since then, I've been going on, and I'm getting these together. And what I found out is the directions had suggested using 14 dark uh, fat quarters and 14 light ones. Well, I'm using a lot of scrap, but that let me think that whatever I put together I needed when I put a light and a dark I'd need about nine blocks of that one made up because I was going to need to make 121 well if I followed that idea I'd end up with 126 which would give me plenty to do and you'll say oh my gosh 126 let me tell you once you get going that's why this was such a lovely uh, pattern for a beginning um, quilter back in the olden days and for experienced uh, people who like to have something that just zips along this is really nice and the result is so good and here's the first row the center block and the first row and I um, gotta tell you you'd say it would be really easy to pick a color well what I ended up doing was I had the outside blocks and the center ready and I started pulling just samples of fabric to see what might go, go well. And really, if you use colors about like this, you're going to want some kind of a brown, a brownish rust, a brownish. And you'll know it when you lay it down there. I had about four uh, ideas. And when I went to the store then, I picked up two pieces 
and this real cocoa color is just great. And remember that for this to work, your um, borders are going to be three inches wide, and they suggest you need two and three fourths yard fabric. So I just went ahead and bought three. The other thing that I did after I washed it and uh, uh, rinsed it out and then pressed it, I laid it so that I could run the full cut, the full three yards. So I folded about twice and I made my three inch um, parts. Now don't forget to cut your sal salvage off first before you start that. And then on the first plan on part one, I told you what about what those lengths were going to be. Don't cut those yet. Wait on that, because what I did was when I started, I said they wanted a five and a half inch strip right here. And so I sort of measured it to see how close I was. That one was pretty close. So I went ahead and I sewed the one on the right and then the one on the left. And you're going to do that each time. And then I pressed it. And remember, pressing is just setting your iron down and picking it up. Don't iron it because that will distort it. And then it got to be fun because I got the next piece, which I think was like ten and a half, maybe. So I measured across there to see if that was pretty pretty close. Then I added just a little bit to an end to um, give myself plenty to go across because I sure didn't want to waste any at three inches. And sewed that one on all the way across, pressed it, and then turned it out and then pressed it gently on the top. Now you can see it's ready. So the next part was to do that outside row, that first row I did. So I put the two panel two two blocks on the right together. And then I sewed the two on the left, and you can see that these were really matching up from where I was sewing across there. Then I stopped, and I went down, and I picked up my bottom row. It doesn't matter if you do your top or your bottom. Just remember which one's which. Remember what's the beginning of your corner, because you can get distracted. The phone can ring. The kid can run through. And you'll say, oh, my gosh, which one was it? And it might not matter. But you knew you liked it the way it was the first time. But anyway, I attached all of those to each other across. So now, and this row is ready. I can't, can't think of any reason to go ahead and lay out the next row. Because these colors are so random, I think it's going to be okay. But I might later when it gets longer. So now what I'm going to do, I've got to the place. I'm going to take this piece... And I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to sew it onto that one with a one fourth inch seam. I'm going to do the left-hand side, same way. Lightly press it in the back. Open the seam, or if, if you like to press it to one side, press it to the dark fabric. And then I opened my seams. And then you're ready to start at the top. Now, the top, this is going to be centered. So you might actually want to take this, fold this strip in half a little bit so you can tell where it is, and start pinning from there out and watch. Now, the nice thing about this also is you have a little bit of stretch in your pieces. So if you're like just a tad off, of the corner. If you gently nudge it, you'll find that it, it will go uh, together because you do have some bias edges as you've cut out. And that completes part two. And that should get you all the way out to the end before we ever look at part three again. Remember, this was on completing a block, attaching a block to another block, adding a border, and then getting ready to add the next round of blocks on the outside. This is really colorful. And if you pick the right color to go with those, I mean, I was really pleased with this brown. It's going to go with the material and the feeling that I wanted of being an older, an old quilt.
This is Stephanie at Hightower Stitching. If you enjoyed this video, learned anything, and you're do working on your churn dash, please subscribe and hit like. And there's a place there for comments, too, because lots of times people will ask questions, and sometimes I can't answer the questions. So if you'll read those, too, you might be able to help somebody else out there. Welcome to the land of hand stitching. Have a great day.